Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The American Postal Workers Union, AFL-CIO, welcomes this opportunity to represent 200,000 postal workers in these important negotiations for a new collective bargaining agreement with the United States Postal Service. Just five decades ago, postal workers were denied their right to negotiate over wages, benefits, and conditions of employment. Rather, we were compelled to engage in what we called collective begging, and our livelihoods were subject to the whims of politicians. Many postal workers qualified for public assistance. And unfortunately, there are forces today that would like to push us back to those days. Today, since the advent of true collective bargaining, gained as a result of the postal strike of 1970, postal workers' lives are vastly improved. And representatives of our union sit across the bargaining table from management as equals, not because we have important titles, but because we have a union sustained and supported by our members. APW members have transparent general goals for these negotiations. As postal workers pour our lifeblood into the institution, we deserve to be justly compensated for our hard work and to, and to enjoy an improving standard of living. We should be provided safe workplaces, free of hostile work environments, and after concluding our careers, enjoy secure and dignified retirements. Our members want an end to the divisive and unfair three-tier wage and benefit structure. We want an end to a situation where new hires do not or barely make a living wage and where full-time career work has been undermined. We strive for dignity and respect on the job. We also approach these negotiations as an opportunity to promote a vision for a vibrant postal service for generations to come. Our members in the APW embrace the crucial mission of the public postal service, to provide postal services to bind the nation together, to provide prompt, reliable, and efficient services to patrons in all areas, and to render postal services to all communities. We will be putting forth proposals for restoring overnight delivery standards and halting any further plant closing and expanding hours of service and for needed staffing as well, as provide and providing an array of financial and other expanded services. We do know that the Postal Service is facing serious challenges. Changes to the mail mix, letters are down while packages are up, create both hardships and hope. The bipartisan 2006 Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act, the PAEA, with its absurd pre-funding mandate of future retiree health care costs and the creation of the artificial postal rate cap, combined with the inability to recoup overpayments to retirement funds and the loss of the exigency price hike at the hands of the Postal Regulatory Commission, have undermined our national treasure. But the fix is in the hands of those who created the crisis, Congress and the PRC, and must not be on the backs of the workers who have already sacrificed far too much in the 2010 to 2015 contract. As we enter these negotiations, powerful forces on Wall Street and the likes of UPS continue to push for the breaking up of the Postal Service and selling pieces off to the highest bidders. Through their well-funded think tanks, like the Heritage Foundation, the Brookings Institute, and Cato, they profess that the Postal Service is a relic of the past, a failure that the private sector can do the job much better. Of course, they are seeking maximum private profit at the expense of the people of this country. Those in postal management who believe in the public postal service, and I know many of you do, should not be afraid of bold and creative thinking and approach these negotiations as an opportunity to, to discuss various ways to protect and expand the public postal service. We are also reminded that there are political forces attempting to make scapegoats out of the proud public sector and postal workers. They want the government to destroy decent retirement and health plans. 
I am reminded that it was none other than former PMG Donahoe who was in this camp when he called on Congress to use the Postal Service as an incubator to slash and burn decent retirement plans and other benefits as a prelude to eliminating them for all federal workers. Unfortunately, this view is now reflected in the budget proposals, the current budget proposals, of both Office of Management and Budget and the Office of Personnel Management, OPM. We vehemently oppose this race to the bottom, for we believe that the Postal Service should be an incubator as, as it has been for decades, of good living wage jobs for workers from all walks of life, with equal pay for equal work for women and minorities and solid job opportunities for veterans. With collective bargaining and the Postal Service living up to its mandate as a model employer, we can be part of the answer to staggering income inequality in this country, where now the wealthiest individual, Bezos of Amazon, shockingly increases his wealth at a rate of 2,000 230,000, couldn't get it, even get it out, it's so absurd. $230,000 a minute. And according to a recent Pew study, over 40% of U.S. households do not have enough in savings to cover a $400 unforeseen expense. The fact that there are now many postal workers in the ranks of this 40% is a state of affairs that should not be acceptable to the post office and the Postal Service, and it is certainly not acceptable to the American Postal Workers Union. Key to the success of the Postal Service, past, present, and future, has been and will be the workers. From those who sell postage and accept packages, to those who sort medicine and catalogs, to those who transport the mail and repair the vehicles, to those who maintain the equipment and facilities, to those who deliver the mail, these negotiations are an opportunity for management to honor and reward this commitment and hard work. The APWWU will approach these negotiations with a passion for the public we serve and the workers we represent. We will keep an open mind, forthrightly share our proposals, and be honest in our dealings. We will work hard to achieve a voluntary negotiated collective bargaining, bargaining agreement. As we meet here on opening day, thousands of APW members around the country are taking up the call for a good contract that advances the well-being of current and future postal workers and are fighting today for a better tomorrow. And with this mandate, the American Postal Workers Union is ready to get to work. We enter these negotiations as part of a movement to protect and enhance a vital and wonderful institution. Many friends and allies, some who have generously shared their time to be present today, are part of this effort. The public postal service belongs to all the people of this country. And before we proceed to the Postmaster General's uh, remarks, I have asked NAACP leader Hillary Shelton on behalf of the NAACP President Derek Johnson and representing a Grand Alliance to save our public postal service and AFL-CEO President Richard Trumpka representing the broad labor movement of 13 million workers to say a few words today. Thank you, Hillary Shelton.